Okay, I think we are rolling. Okay, so uh, hello everyone and welcome to this short video tutorial. I, I hope it's going to be short uh, about uh, 3D animation. Um, so welcome to uh, this video and to my channel again. Uh, so basically this is my first video tutorial that I am making uh, regarding uh, animation. This is my first uh, tutorial where I will be animating something for you guys. It's going to be basically something that covers the basics of animation. Uh, I'm a 3D animator. I've been uh, studying at Animation Mentor uh, recently, uh, also at um, Anim Squad, uh, so uh, another an school of animation. So basically, I've been um, in the industry for a while, since uh, 2012, uh, when I graduated from uh, uh, Animation Mentor. Uh, so basically I wanted to make you guys this short uh, tutorial regarding the basics of animation. And we're going to be covering uh, the so-called uh, 12 principles of animation. So the 12 principles were uh, basically created at the, you know, uh, let's say gold times of Disney's, uh, you know, animation process where uh, the nine old, the nine old men, they're known like you know the nine old men who basically found out this uh, um, this way of uh, you know presenting an idea in a more pleasing way, more believable to the audience, and so uh, basically uh, the. Principles are 12 and they are basically uh, a little bit complicated complicated to uh, explain, but it's going to be easier to, to show you uh, what they do uh, when we're going to get into the actual animation. But basically just to cover, it, cover them uh, quickly, there are really tons of uh, videos regarding the, um, the, the principles so that, uh, you know, you can really see uh, specific, um, you know, tutorials where you can just apply, uh, for instance, squash and stretch or just exaggeration or uh, doing, the, you know, solid drawing and so on. So, basically, uh, I'm just going to be covering them uh, uh, really fast and then we'll get into the actual animation. So, uh, the first one is squash and stretch, as and as you can, you know, see from the words, is basically when you go and squash and stretch, uh, you know, for instance, a ball that's coming from really uh, far distance in height and starts to fall. And uh, to give the sense of, uh, you know, speed, uh, you can really go there and stretch it a lot. And that's one of the principles we're going to be, of course, uh, using. Uh, for creating our animation later. And uh, another one is, uh, and also for the squash, it's maybe when the ball reaches the ground and starts, start really, you know, squashing down and, uh, you know, like giving a sense of organic uh, thing, you know. Uh, then we find the uh, anticipation where, you know, when we usually do move movements, we never start an action from a complete stop. There is always an anticipation, and then we go directly into the action. So we never go into the action by, you know, standing still into a complete stop, and then boom, we go out. It, you know, the it's not pleasing for the eye. That's the thing. And so, uh, by doing a, a good anticipation, can really help a lot. Um, then we have staging. Uh, basically, when we stage in animation, animation, or also uh, when we are filming a movie, uh, giving a good staging can really give also the kind of uh, attitude that the scene is having. For instance, uh, if we have, um, you know, a character in a complete, you know, center of the screen, it's not really appealing. So we usually put a character a little bit three quarters uh, of the, you know, of the um, resolution gate, let's say like that, of the camera. So uh, to give it more, you know, it's more appealing. And also if we need to give uh, 
you know, uh, maybe somebody who is scared, uh, sometimes it's good to also have a, a good um, placement of the camera, like that the car character becomes really tiny and the car camera is like up and facing the character down, so you, you see like the character down uh, with, uh, you know, scared and, uh, you know, with the camera up. Um, uh, different uh, thing is when we have the character who is, you know, um, in charge of the situation. So usually, like a superhero, we usually tend to get a camera that's facing them from below to give them more importance, you know? So that's really gives, uh, that's really important, not just in animation, but, you know, it's the thing that directors uh, usually always use, whether it is, you know, for cinema, TV series, soap operas, or whatever. Uh, post to pose and straight ahead action is basically two ways that an animator can use to block a shot. Uh, basically, the most common way that I see is post to pose. For instance, if we have, uh, you know, a first pose on one, we'll have, uh, you know, uh, another one, another key on frame 10, for instance, and we'll get a breakdown in, uh, you know, for instance, into frame five. So basically, and that's the way usually to people approach. But most, uh, you know, other animators can, you know, go there and use like straight ahead action uh, blocking so that, you know, you have a, a frame on one, then you go on three, five, seven, ten, you know, and you go like straight ahead. But that's not really the way that uh, I usually like working on it's for me is more organized uh, you know going pose to pose follow through and overlapping action uh, overlapping action is basically uh, what gives the sense of the breaking what we call the breaking of joints for instance when we uh, lift up an arm up you know from uh, you know from the table and we bring it up uh, to give it more pleasing uh, presentation, you know, we usually go there and animate, you know, the, um, uh, you know, go there and breaking up stuff, like moving first the, the, um, the shoulder first going up, then the arm and forearms go up, and then we see that the uh, arms starts to follow, you know, it doesn't go up like this, it starts following, you know, like rotating a little bit, and then we see also the fingers that starts to, you know, um, rotating a little bit in, you know, like giving the sense of, you know, following uh, and giving, you know, the overlap uh, sense of it. And so that really is um, a, a cool, you know, way to present stuff. If we, if we just lift an arm like this, it's not really appealing. But if we go, you know, and give more a sense of it like this, it's more pleased, right? Uh, slow in and slow out is like, you know, uh, it's like giving, uh, favoring, you know, a pose uh, at the beginning or at the end of the sequence. For instance, if we want to favor uh, more the first frames uh, of an action, we'll try to keep that kind of pose, uh, you know, that, for instance, it, it doesn't change for a while and then, you know, uh, it's it, it goes you know, into another uh, pose, but, you know, with more frames that favors that pose, and, you know, vice versa. So, uh, then we find arcs that's really important to give, you know, also in this case, to give the eye uh, a more pleasing way to follow stuff, because usually in reality, there's nothing that really uh, moves in a straight line. There's always an arc, and so even if something is robotic, we, you know, we all always um, go there and give arcs to it to give more a sense of, uh, you know, uh, organic thing, you know. Uh, secondary actions is really uh, a fun one usually to use uh, because uh, it's like, you know, having a character walk and then uh, it's not like just walking and, for instance, looking forward and then we can do like walking and then looking on the side still walking doing a blink to say hey, hi you know that's that's a thing or maybe a character that's you know there breathing like an idol and then you go there and make it scratch your head you know that's that's also secondary action um so 
uh, we find later on timing. This is one, I think, one of the most important one because thanks to timing, we can really give a rhythm to our, uh, our animation. And with that, it means that even with the ball bouncing, we can give a sense of personality. For instance, we have a ball bouncing like boom, boom, boom. You know, it's really, uh, uh, it, it, it's really um, not appealing because it's doing the, the same rhythm every time. But if we go there and, for instance, like doing boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom, ba boom, 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 you know, that's more appealing. It's giving like almost life to that ball, you know. So timing is really, really important. Um, and it really can give, uh, you know, a strong personality to the whole shot. Uh, with exaggeration, basically we, uh, in animation, we tend to exaggerate things to give, uh, uh, you know, a more sense of, especially in cartoon style, it's really important because by that we can increase uh, or decrease, but usually increase, um, you know something that we want to make the audience understand, which is maybe a, a character that's uh, scared. We go there and really uh, sculpt, uh, you know, the mouth shape or the brows or the eyes, whatever. Even if in reality it cannot be possible, um, we do that. And a lot of, of exaggeration, for instance, we can find it in the uh, Looney Tunes style. You know, the Warner Brothers really use that a lot, and that's really what I love a lot to see in, in cartoon animation. Solid drawings and appeal, uh, I think that those two uh, go together, uh, but it's a personal idea, uh, because with solid drawings, basically it's more into when we talk about, you know, in 2D animation, but it can be referred also to 3D, and basically uh, the solid drawings can be the poses. So the poses need to be appealing, need to be strong. So that's the, the two last principles that, you know, that covers the 12 principles and uh, last but not least, those are really important because, you know, a strong pose can really uh, determine the, uh, the strength of, uh, you know, an entire shot. So with, with that said, let's get into the animation itself and let's see, first of all, uh, you know, the character will be, that will be animating and then we'll see the actual animation we're going to be animating to get today. Okay, so basically this is um, a squirrel rig that I uh, got from Animation Mentor, and I've been a student there, so uh, I was able to download for free the the rig. I don't think it's freeware freeware for uh, you know for anybody. Uh, so uh, I'm not gonna share on in the description the link to download the the uh, you know the rig, but for those who are attending Animation Mentor, I hope you uh, can enjoy this uh, this tutorial or whatever kind of school you're attending. I hope you can enjoy it. It's gonna be really a, a simple tutorial on how I approach animation. We're not gonna like I said, not gonna go in really depth of details but just to give you a sense on how the 12 principles of animation work and how to apply them into a whole shot so not just using how to use one of them how to use all of them together so let's see what we're gonna be animating today so with that said um, I'm gonna go and uh, um, start a uh, doing a couple of things that I usually do to my uh, shot and the first thing is creating uh, uh, we, um, a, a selection set for uh, the um, the squirrel I already staged the camera but uh, this is you know an idea we can maybe change it later but I locked it uh, so that uh, if I uh, for instance uh, move try to move the camera and I don't want to it stays still so I, I don't mess up anything so uh, I'm not really good on you know talking uh, while animating so I'll be animating most but every time that I do something that's really important I'll be showing you guys what's about so the first thing that I'm gonna be doing is giving a new layer to 
the ground, so that's not going to be selectable anymore, so that I can only select the, um, uh, you know, the character here. So I'm going to go here and create a new shell called, let's say, just ask for, you know, for squirrel. Okay. Ask for squirrel. Okay. So I'm going to select everything, um, all the controls of the rig. I'm going to create sets, quit selection set, and I'll type in all S. So here we go. I'm going to be working with all the controls. I usually, when I have multiple controls like browse, mouth, eyes, I usually go there and create separated um, selection sets so that I can go there and work on one thing at a time when I need to. And if I need to delete certain things of, for instance, also the browse, just the browse, I'll go there and select the only the browse control and uh, you know that's the way that I usually go through. So I have Auto Key on. I am on Maya 2019 uh, student version so uh, I really liked the, uh, the you know the cache playback toggle uh, feature that came out because it's really really important for me to you know also work on a slow machine that's really Really, something that I was waiting for a long time, and finally, I can find this feature on uh, Maya 2019. So, if you are having troubles with high rig, uh, high resolution get rigs, and you're gonna go, you, you wanna, you know, go through it, get Maya 2019. It's gonna be a blast for you, I'm sure. So, let's go into animation here. Where is it? And let's set everything to clamped and step. That's the way that I usually work in. So to block my shot. Okay, so basically uh, what I'm gonna do now is put an idea of you know where everything is gonna be working. You know, for instance, how things are gonna be working. So let's think that I wanna have, you know, like like the character coming from up, going down here and uh, look into the, uh, the people, you know, to the audience, and then preparing again in anticipation, and then jumping out. So I just want to have my character staged in here uh, in a pleasing way so that I can, you know, go here and try to a little bit of that. Put it in a, in a nice way. You can be pleased enough. You know, that, that's not really much to do with this character. Uh, that's why I like it. So we, we can really think a lot about using the 12 principles and not really caring much about, uh, you know, uh, too many controls. Okay, so basically, let's get an idea on how things can work. It's important to have, for instance, here not putting the the you know, if we put it like this, we're gonna only have negative space over here, but it's nice to have a little bit more. This is what I think. So, basically, uh, I want to start with this pose, even if it's not gonna be our first pose, because it's what I prefer doing. So, Let's get <coughs> a key to our character here and put it on, you know, 35, for instance. Uh, well, we're not already timing the shot, just, you know, creating the, the poses, and then we're going to see later where uh, they're going to be, uh, where's the, the right place to put them. Okay, so. Let's get to uh, one of the things that I really like doing is having like a splitted screen uh, in in Maya, like having uh, let's say for now, just for now, have yeah, having this like our camera up here with only the geometry of the character and the resolution gate. Okay, so this is what I really 
care about at the moment. Let's get here and say, no, let's use, now let's do fill, it's better. Uh, so I'm just going to use this little uh, angle of the screen to select, uh, you know, stuff. So that's the way that I usually like working. Uh, so basically, now that we're here, uh, the thing that I want to—that's oh, that's a cool, that's a cool one, really important. Um, so basically, by looking at the camera, I want to bring our character up. No, let's close this one for, for the moment. That we don't really care for it for now. Um, Okay, so basically, let's put it out screen for. Uh, that's basically what we want, and uh, I want to start giving the sense that he is about to uh, fall. Even if we don't see it, I like the idea of uh, you know ready. Given the sense that he is about to, to fall. Down here, I'm gonna go and cheat a lot and just uh, because you know the things that happen off screen usually you cannot much, much see it, so it's just gonna be it. There we go, or maybe not. Feel like more. Yeah, let's just go in here and you know leave it like that for now. And the thing that is really important for me right now is to start, you know, posing him like this. You know, that it, it, it's a choice on how you prefer. In this case, so you can really play around and you know find what looks best. But you know, this is something that this pose is not going to be visible. Um, so we can start thinking that the character is going to come. Like this. So it can be fun to see what happens. Okay. Yeah, I like this. Gives a little bit of silhouette to the character. Um, okay. So maybe, yeah, we'll leave it like that. Put a key here. So we have these two keys. Um, and so now the most important thing to do is to okay. Try to think about you know a breakdown. Maybe 35 is yeah, it can be a good one for timing, but we'll we'll see it later. Uh, the thing that I want to do now is get this pose and basically put it on here, but we're going to start favoring a little bit what was the other pose, you know, like this is going to be the contact. So it's really important. It's a pose. It's going to be really important. This is here is where then everything will be, you know, changing. Oops. Okay.
Okay, so it's good to have maybe good silhouette here in the tail that you can really feel that you know you can go there and maybe start moving things. It, it's a little bit of challenge. See what can work and what cannot. But you know, you can you can go there and experiment a little bit. Maybe that's, that's a little bit too much. See, there there is a little really. A lot you can you can experiment with, but it can really take time to give. You know, find a pose that works. But you know, I don't want to go too much in detail. Otherwise, it's going to be take forever. And so, if you can see here already, there is a, a sense of uh, you know something that's going on here. You no, know? so. And also give a little bit stretch to the ears, just a, a little bit. See, if you go back and forth, you can you can already feel that there's something. You now there's a little connection between the two poses, and. Getting really pleased with me, so it's nice. Okay, so basically, once we're here, the the next pose will be squashing the character down. So the thing that I want to do also to make it, you know, more easy for me is to select the whole tail and have an, another selection set say tail pass no, so for me it can be also easier here to select the tail and maybe in this case I wanna have the same, you know, something that it's similar to this pose and I wanna middle mouse drag and Put a key here, okay. But it's not gonna be really the same thing because I'm gonna change a lot in the pose here, and we're gonna be working a lot to the, in this pose. Later on. I mean, on the tail, we're going to be working a lot on it. And so now, basically, I want to put the, this rotation on zero and really go there and squash a lot of the character. See here, like, you know, maybe too much, but, you know, whether it's still working, that's not a big deal. Let's reset here the the ears and I want to bring them forward, you know, like like we said. Okay, so already in this poses that we have here, everything is already working. You know? So uh, basically when we get to this point. There's really a lot that we can still do, like bringing the tail in a different pose that we can, you know, experiment with. Let's see. Yeah, like for instance, 
we can have this later, this pose, so we can, we can save this and have a pose a little bit different, like let's reset here to zero and put something like, yeah, something more like this. Whoops. You know, still that the tail is being dragged. Right. And then later it's gonna go into this pose that has a little bit of you know, there's something that connects them, so here maybe we can have character a little bit more stretched down. Maybe here I'm going front, and then you know, like get back and pressed, you know. Years back, so maybe the extreme one can be the other one that we just created. Okay, and then we can we go into this pose. So we're not working on the time yet. Maybe we can pull this up a little bit. Maybe it's, it can be fun if it's going to be maybe coming earlier, this pose. Okay, so what we can do now is putting the character, you know, our squirrel in, in, a, in a way that we can hold this pose and maybe like doing a later on like small, you know, uh, changes in the head like darts you know like squirrels does like you know stuff like that we can maybe add it those later I want to concentrate first on creating um, you know the basics so now I want to go there and make the squirrel look up like to say now I wanna I wanna jump again. I, I, I said hi to the audience, but now I wanna no, I wanna go away. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm gonna up the tail a little bit. Try to, to have still a little bit of negative space here so you can see the, the character. Okay. And so again, we can go and squash our character again. You know we can we can cheat for now and borrow this frame for instance that I like and because in this case he is preparing you know this is an anticipation pose we can really make him concentrate a little bit you know, make the sense that he's thinking about preparing, you know, for the jump. Boom. And then the the other frame will be basically him that it's he's out of frame. I want to do the pose that he is say let's put a, let's put a key everywhere so that I don't mess up things for later. Okay, so what I want to do now is 
is you know what I want I want to put the the extreme now it's going to be something like like this I just put a little bit of three quarters so it's more appealing to the eye okay so now you can give like you know that the tension of the tail has been released you know uh, for the jump and so he reverses the tail you know you can do something like this and let's see you know like I said I'm I'm not really going into really a lot of details just because otherwise we'll take forever at least I, I don't think to be a fast animator so um, I don't think to be really you know so much talented to be fast and you know with really high high quality animation but for what I what I can just to show you know that this is nice to have a good art here you know like giving the sense of a round shape and here to the tail you see um, and that's really important to give everywhere you know in all the parts of the of a shot you know you see the contrast for me it's working really fine and so now the thing that I want to do is go later a little bit later and bring the character directly up here you know like off screen so that we don't see it anymore but you know going diagonally you can see the the straight line that comes from one place to another so that we can understand that it's you know it's there's a straight line that connects between the you know the line shape of the character to where he is right now, you know. Okay, but of course, this is too far, you know. But you know, we're just experimenting. We'll we'll see the timing later. If we have all the poses, and so basically, we can go there, and be you know we can use. Uh, the twin machine tool that I really enjoy using. My early ages, <laughs> early times when I was an animator, I, <clears throat> I didn't know about twin machines. So I, I did stuff, you know, by by eye, you know, by sense, and uh, it was really hard for me to animate. And really, when I discovered twin machine, it was really a blast. <laughs> so, uh, so let's go here and. Put a breakdown that favors are just a little, you know, the other pose here, you know, like, yeah. But the thing we're going to be doing is selecting our tail and, you know, try to give a sense of. You know that there is connection between everything. So something like maybe we can put a little bit of connections on the ground to see that. Yeah, something like like this. You know, and but we can go. You know, usually the way that I work is for certain things I go there and. Uh, do it later certain things but yeah uh, so if we see the shot right now how it's coming you know you can have a sense that you know there are informations that can make you understand what's going on maybe uh, of course we can put another pose here 
that you know maybe a pose that favors the characters that's coming in then the character that is you know like here or maybe oh, let's put it like you know it's favoring still the pose there and you if you can see there is this you know the character is is here then it's here and then there's a big you know there is this spacing that really is important that's one of the other things that goes with uh, timing you know and there needs to be a good spacing so that things you know have you know like we said before ease in and ease out really helps a lot so let me bring this a little bit you know like that so we don't see the character and it can be disturbing okay so it's really slow but you know it can give you the sense of uh, the whole thing let's put it on main frames here let me see let me just check yeah we're recording i always want to check that we're recording okay so basically we're gonna be cutting some frames here because everything is too slow okay Cut here. Maybe we'll go into the and go maybe into the stretch. No, more fast. Okay, let's see. I think we can take this a little bit and bring like in between here. Like the tail that can be a little bit favoring. Like something like this. Let's go there and sculpt it a little bit more. Yeah, you know, sometimes it can be challenging to get a right pose. Sometimes, but you know, it's as long as you can enjoy it. Uh, that's you know, not a big deal. You know? So sometimes I go there and really spend a lot of time. It was better before. You know, it's always a back and forth. But like I said, some, certain things. I usually do them into uh, into spline because it's the way that I usually prefer working for certain things. And that's better now. Yeah, it's still too slow. I think certain things. I think we can. We need to go and go by one frame. Something like this. Yeah. Looks better. Maybe a little bit of rotation here. Yeah. Still like body going forward. Something like that. Maybe we can pull it down more while it's just coming back so we give a little sense of arc to it. Maybe here I can start rotating a little bit. Yeah, Some, something like that. Feels better to me. Okay, so uh, this is 
basically what I call a first stage of blocking where all the information for me to sell the idea uh, are there so I, I would go to the you know my soup uh, supervisors or director and show it and say hey what do you think and maybe he can say oh it's nice go on or maybe he can he can say you need to change everything so uh, hope hopefully uh, I've been animating not really much so like only maybe 20 minutes on it so I really didn't lose much and you know uh, 20 minutes uh, while doing this um, you know tutorial I usually can spend half of the time you know uh, even less when I'm working uh, you know more concentrated so uh, but Basically, these are all the information that I put in. Um, that's not really much, but the most important thing is that the poses are strong. And so that's one of the principles that we're applying. We are applying, you know, timing and spacing, like here, that accelerates, you know, slow ins and slow outs. A big pop here that we're gonna go into it later. Then here we can maybe we could add a secondary action like a small oops sorry like in the tail like a, like a, you know a, sort of kind of a rotation like a, you know or yeah something to give or maybe in the ears uh, in the ears like stuff that maybe I don't know if squirrels do like you know uh, you know. <laughs> maybe it's something more maybe I don't know if cats maybe do more but you know um, I don't think there's a control for the for the teeth otherwise or the mouth but I don't think so it could be interesting oh yeah this it could be nice you know like <laughs> stuff like that uh, so um, I'm not gonna go really, I don't think I'm gonna put much information on it. Maybe I'll go, like I said before, a little something or on the tail or the ears. But it's something I'll be doing, I think, later, just because it's a demo. So uh, if it was maybe a, you know, uh, a production, I will go there and, and put them into the blocking so that I can tell the director, look, I want to put also this into it right now. But this is a thing that we can do it later, eventually. Okay, so the thing that I'll be doing now is start to see if. Okay, yeah. After this, I want to go ahead and start putting some, you know, breakdowns and in betweens. So, for instance, I want to go here. And with Twin Machine, I want to try putting, you know, an overshoot, you know, like an exaggeration of this pose. We go here and we stretch out a little bit. I don't know if it's going to be working, but we can try. You know, like popping up, you know, it can be cool. Yeah, you see, like a boom, and then comes back. Yeah, it's something that it's pleasing to me. Uh, so this is the thing that I wanted to add, of course. Many other things are gonna go. We're gonna go later into the in the curves of the graph better, and we're gonna go there and uh, make them work better. Okay, so now that we are in this phase, the thing that I want to do is try to. Okay, for instance, now we can. Put a breakdown here. Uh, 
you know, like character is, but uh, look up, you see this little arc it's doing, looking down, so it's not a straight line like, you know, like from here to here, you know, looking, no, it's going down first, so it's more appealing. Go, you know, compress a little bit of tail. Oops. Okay, so now, for instance, one of the things that I think about is nice to have. Uh, like an anticipation of an anticipation so that the anticipation basically is this one that the character is ready to jump and the thing that I want to add is also like you know the character going up a little bit like preparing Maybe looking down a little bit. You know, like, oh, you see, like, head is going up. But it's going to be really subtle. So we're not going to, I don't want to make it feel it much. So if it works, it's good. If it doesn't, we'll pull it out. Let's try a different thing, like... And it's all about... You know, exper experimenting a little bit. I'll keep a little bit of negative space here. Rotate out a little bit the tail. Let's see if I can do it. If it works just a little. I don't know. We'll see it later. Maybe maybe it doesn't work. So we'll we'll see later for this one. But I I think I'm gonna go into like you know, putting another key here and opening the tail like in reverse a little bit, just a little bit. You know, it, it, it can be a little bit dangerous when you try to do things like this. See, you can uh, find yourself in strange situations, but if they work, it's a, it's a cool thing. Yeah, I think it can it can work a little bit. Like preparing the anticipation, you know, preparing the anticipation. That's cool. Um, okay, so now here we can select the old character again, and uh, yeah, like in Twin Machine, we can try to push a little bit more here. You see, no, sorry. The pose. Yeah, you see. To keep you know, to keep it alive. And then boom, you have the change. 
And here, maybe we can start. Like, let me see. Preparing the jump. But you can zero out this one. Maybe this one can stay go back. Let's see how it works. Yeah. It's uh understandable, <laughs> let's say. It's gonna be a big change in the shape. But yeah, so we've got all this. So these are new informations that I put in. Uh, for instance, now I can go here and play around with the with the squirrels ears. If I want to do something, yeah, it's not really appealing. <laughs> yeah, this is it feels better. Um, I would just want to go and save the shot. You know, you never know what happens. Call it S one. Okay. So basically, now we're gonna be. Uh, for now, the body is completely still in the rig. Uh, I don't want to put poses to the body uh, just because, you know, you can put something to keep it alive later into spine. Um, and for this test, uh, we I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, so, yeah, basically, this is our blocking plus of the shot. Maybe just to keep it alive a little bit, we can just rotate a little bit the body and maybe give a little bit more information to the tail. Oops, that's too much. You know, just to keep it alive a little bit. Yeah. So now the thing that I want to do. is put some other you know informations like poses in between so that favors poses for instance in this case I want to put a breakdown here that favors this pose right here so it's gonna go as a good you know slight in I'll push it more Yeah, you see, it's all about timing and uh, posing to give a sense of, uh, you know, the animation, how it can come out. Okay, so the thing that I will do now is convert our, you know, once I have all these animations and uh, basically I want to put another key here, so I want to favor still this pose. You know, just keep it alive and boom. Or maybe, you know what? I want to push it down more. Yeah, this feels better. You know, sometimes when you play around also with Twin Machine, it can really help you a lot finding a good pose. You know, it's it's nice that the tail starts leading the action. You know, I, I like it. So it can it can feel nice. Save the shot. Every time that I, every time that I do something that I like, uh, I go there and save immediately. Even if um, immediately, even if I did it just five seconds before 
uh, I really got myself an alternate introduction when I was on a TV series. It happened that you know uh, I was doing a lot of things, and then the computer crashed, and you know I lose a lot of things. Uh, it, it happens a lot of times, so I go there and come. Uh, save uh, constantly saving. I don't have out of uh, out of save because it's gonna it's too much. Like you know, in five minutes I can find myself a lot of uh, for the workflow that I have. I can find a, on my desktop or a folder or you know whatever tons of um, uh, files or you know save files. Uh, and it's too confusing for me. I wanna. Keep things organized. That's okay. So uh, now that we are here, uh, I like to go to every single pose and put a key to the whole character. Okay. So now, what I want to do is go there and basically. See if there is something I can refine. Otherwise, I think it's really everything's working fine. Maybe I can just a little bit dispose and make it more, you know, more round shape of the face. But yeah. All right. So yeah, let's get into spline right now. And so the thing that I usually do is here I go to auto key so that he can Maya easily detects the the places where like from frame 20 or 30 the two keys are exactly the same so he doesn't overshoot and he believes that they need to be flat and that's what I prefer doing if there's overshoots that I need to go and put in I'll do it by hand uh, uh, later uh, into into the graph editor. So let's see, coming out of spline, what we have. Okay, so we can see that there are things that are moving that should be still. Uh, things that we can basically time better. So we're gonna go there and see, for instance. That from here to here, we start seeing his butts coming in, and that's not what we want to do. So let's put the first key to 13 and see what happens. Yeah, it's better. Okay. So for now, I'm still working without delaying any keys and still in the graph editor. Uh, sorry, in the in the viewport, doing by hand without delaying controls, keys, whatever. My, I'm mean, just in spline to see how things work. And so something that I can do is that I can keep this frame here, and move it down here to keep it still. Okay, I like it. Oh, I forgot doing one thing. Then once we get out of spline, we need to get here and say out of key. That's really important. Otherwise, it's gonna put us again keys in step mode. Okay, so I'll drag, drag this key here. Bring it here so we have a little bit of you know movement, really slightly, or maybe less. It's middle drag. I did middle drag from here to here to have less information. Okay. So now here I see that it's moving a lot. So for instance, I like this little movement. So I want this pose, these two poses I want, but I want to retime it to make it longer. So middle mass drag, put it like here, set a key. 
And this is nice that it comes here, when, I mean faster, and then goes directly down. But I want to hold it just for a few frames, this pose right here. So in Trim Machine, we'll go to 60, and I'll take this pose. Yeah, you can you can see that this little hold can be better as a feel. You can see that you know there's something to change in the in the tail, but we'll do it later. But it's you know given the sense of it. Okay. All right. So basically, now what we're done here, the thing that I want to do. is go to the graph editor and start tweaking stuff. So the first thing that we're going to be working on is the hips because the hips are, you know, the most important part especially, you know, when we're doing a walk cycle for instance and uh, you know, that's what for me is the most important thing. So I want to put on the second screen the twin machine that for now we're not going to be using. So no big deal. And let's see a little bit here in, in the graph editor. This is usually the kind of workspace that I like having split it. And the camera, if I, if I only have one monitor, like I did, like I had like only, you know, for a long time I just had one monitor. And uh, <clears throat> basically, yeah, the thing that I like doing is having here a good panels and get my where is it? Can't see it. Graph right. There you go. So I like having this kind of you know workspace <clears throat> into Maya. And the first thing I want to go and fix is the highs. Okay, so putting a nice you can you can see here that something strange going on this is line is a little bit a little bit unconnected so the thing that I can do is maybe bring these guys up see what happens And I usually I don't work right now in you know putting keys, delaying keys. You can see here there's no key on 17. If I drag this out, it's gonna give me a key here. So I prefer not doing this because otherwise for now I'll have a bunch of keys in the timeline. I don't remember what I did. So <clears throat> I usually go and just adjust the values and do eventually delays like this later, but I don't think it's going to be the case for this time. It depends a lot on what kind of shot you're animating. So, okay. So, one thing is that on this key here, we don't want to have this slow in coming. You know, this slow coming in the key. So, we're gonna just put this key, or maybe we can put it on flat break it now that's the kind of sense like a bouncing ball you know yeah. and here and flat this out okay so basically we're gonna have a more yeah it's just really feeling better same thing goes on the other side here. You want to favor more a little bit this this pose here. You know, the pose was here. Let's bring it out a little bit. Sure, better shot. Break the pose and do a boom. 
Okay, maybe it's a little bit too fast. We can go there with that back a little bit. Like I said, it's all depending on what kind of a... Okay. It's important to see you know what? If we go here and adjust it by hand, maybe it's gonna feel better. But it's a thing we can do later. Yeah. Yeah. So for now let's concentrate on here. And for for this one, I think we're done for this tangent. And so for the others, uh, on the translation X, we didn't do anything, so we're going to just delete it. And work on this one. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, let's put this to flat. Okay, so in my... Because this is going to be like a straight line, I want to put like these two keys like linear. You know? Now she's coming, boom. Or maybe, you know what? Without doing linear, you can do like more pleasing thing, like putting an arc. Here, let's say, yeah, let's see a little bit. So there's a, just an experiment to see what's going on if we do something like that, but now maybe. It's better if we put it on, on linear here, linear here. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, much better. Uh, so basically, we're going to give a little sense of more organic things to the shot by working also on the other controls and give us a little bit of arcs. And, uh, you know, because if we just consider this uh, control here, it's going to be really linear, this kind of place, right? So it's okay. Just want to bring out, up a little bit more this one to give a little bit more sense of speed. And she, yeah, just a little bit more. It's no big deal, you know. can try to see without it comes out. Yeah, but it's a little bit too fast. So can put this one in. Yeah, we can leave it like this for now. Okay. So now what we can do, we haven't worked on the rotation either. So we can delete it, and also the scales, I haven't used them, so delete. And now, what I want to start doing uh, by hand in the timeline is, you know, making my way up to the other controls. So the first control would be, say, this one. You know, like, yeah, I like this one. Starting to stretch a little bit more control. Maybe, you know what, stretching it here. Should maybe less. Maybe more. <laughs> it's all about experimenting. 
Now uh, maybe here it's too much. Yeah, we can maybe keep it for now. Most important thing is that things work. That's the most important thing. Okay, so let's go here and see if we can use it again. For instance, in this frame right here, yeah, we can maybe use it a little bit. This is a new key, but it's a no big deal because we are already going and building a way up. Just a bit. No, it's gonna break the break itself like this. But it's giving the sense, you know, it's got a big sense to it. Maybe it's a little bit too far to jump. It's maybe better if right, the next key here, maybe we pull it down a little bit. Yeah, maybe it's better like this. And oops, this is gonna be tricky. There's a lot of things happening also in the tail that's confusing my eye, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> so uh, one thing that we also need to do here is to, to break this tangent and do it like this. Let's see a little bit how much we can pull it. If we, if we just pull it out, let's see what's happening. Now that's that's a little bit weird. So yeah, every time that I just don't like something, I just go Control Z, Control Z, and go back. So basically, yeah, something that's bothering me a lot is maybe it's a lot of uh, you know back and forth. Every time we need to do something, so it's completely normal. Yeah, but maybe it can work for now. Okay. Uh, maybe also with the tail, that's gonna be working better later. It's gonna give a more. You know, if we put the. We get rotation to the so for instance. Just you know, experimenting with something. Let's see what happens. You know, it's already changing a lot. You can see you know what I mean. Um, Yeah, so that's a big change in, in shape. So here we can play a little bit. The tail. Maybe, you know, put some other frames like 85. You know, and pull it, pull the character up more. You know, out of screen, for instance. Let's do it faster. And. A little bit. Yeah, the tail is a little bit more frustrating sometimes when, when you need to find the right pose for it. 
But like I said, when you're done, reach it. You're doing something that's nice. It's always. Let's go there and reverse. Let's see what we get. Yeah, it's something like that. Maybe delayed it a little bit. Yeah, we maybe can go for something like that, but of course it needs to be more polished. And yeah, maybe have a little bit of still delay in camera. The tail, you don't see it. Yeah, maybe we can go for something like that. But yeah, basically we're we're all on our way with the shot. Uh yeah. For instance here there is a compenetration. Uh we're gonna fix that later when we go direct you know working just with the tail so for now just wanted to put the minimum that we need you know and that's really rough but it's gonna be uh you know it's gonna be working better just wanna maybe you know, put this one here This is a nice one. Keep it. Maybe keep, you know, change a little bit. And I just, I'm just trying to dress a little bit now just to find myself uh, in a more easier position later. It's all about back and forth. That's the thing. Now, you know what? Maybe it's better if the tail here is going up already with this one drag, you know, falling. Yeah, maybe this one is a little bit too much. It's accentuated. Yeah. 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 It's more. It's more pleased to the eye. Yeah. Um, okay. So once we get here, one thing we can do is go there and start sculpting a little bit the other parts of the body. For instance, here, and see what we can do. Uh, for instance, in this pose, I like to have, oops, I like to have the body here, more lead. I don't know, you know, maybe like, let's see, leading forward. Yeah, maybe it can work. Yeah, maybe we are still squashing down. Here, still continuing. Yeah, it can feels a bit natural. Okay, so I'm trying to give a little bit of arc in this kind of movements. You know, like it can help a character give a sense of organicity. Organicity is, is that correct? <laughs> uh, so, so here. Oh, maybe it's too much. Yeah, here for instance, I can keep the body down. And then it reaches later. You see how it goes. 
this part here comes up later where it's working better. And here, for instance, here, you can put it, bring it down a little bit. We're not exaggerating too much. Yeah, it's too much. Okay, and now we can find a way to, you know, make him pleased. Yeah, maybe it's working. And the overall shot is coming out, I think, not bad. Of course, there are a lot of things that can be addressed. We'll try to see now what we can do. Working especially with the head, that it's you know the part of the body we've been working most. So, so it's it's like if it feels like we are still in blocking for some reasons. And now it's good to you know. Start giving a sense of maybe this is too much pulled. Yeah. So we're tr we're trying to break. I'm trying to break a little bit and keep it the continued continuity of you know for instance. See the teeth here. Then they go here, then forward. You know, I, I'm trying to give like an arc. And now it should be good if it goes less, like, you know, coming forward, then up, and then settles. Or like, you know, that's coming from up, goes down, squashes, up, and then comes here again. So that's the thing that I'm trying to achieve right now. For so now, it's like hitting a wall and then coming back. And that's that's not what I want to try to have. So here, want to pull it forward. We rotate it down a little bit to give the sense that. Okay, so see we have like different poses that are coming out right now, but it's because when we get into spline, we get a different feel of you know the things that we're that we're doing. But now I'm realizing that for what I'm doing. It's better if I do something like, you know, squash here, maybe. I want to try to stay on model if, even though I'm getting out a little bit. I'm gonna go here, put it back a little bit. You know, maybe it's good if I go here and already start. Now, you know what? Maybe it's good if I favor this pose here, see what happens. Yeah, maybe it's better. Feels much better. We go here. Yeah, just okay. 
if it's too much let's favor between machine a little bit the other pose yeah it feels a little bit I don't know I think it it can be like this part can be a little bit more organic here for instance it's coming back here and it's not should go a little bit down okay so let's try to give sense of Okay, so now let's put it back a little bit, you know, like Yeah. Feels much better. Okay, yeah. This little, you know, going up and then sells back down feels much better to me. Um uh, One of the things that bothers me a little bit is that if I see the, the, the teeth, you see it here and then it's like, you know, rotates, rotates, and then boom, it's like hitting the wall. So maybe I can't. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, it's really working better. So now, uh, here are some keys that are related to the years. Uh, to the years, so I'll just delete them, and you know, just do a subtle movement. Delete, delete all the rest here that I don't need, just to keep it alive. Yeah, it's really a subtle movement that can really help animation go much much better okay so at this point we'll let's see again where we we're at yeah so at this point basically I want to work just a little bit more on the head here You know, like you know, putting a little bit of delay on the rotation up. Let's say, like, maybe you know what? Maybe we can do it in the Yeah, it's already working a little bit. You can accentuate those in the graph later. Yeah, like it's working now. Let's favor a little bit this pose again and put it down just a little bit. Okay, so I think that here we can we can adjust this a little bit. Yeah. Also here there is this rotation that I'm not it's not really pleased it's pleasing me. So I think it's 
I'm working a lot frame by frame right now, but it depends on, you know, at the moment I'm trying to just, you know, close the animation and uh, just adjust some little tweaks later and show you how I do them. Especially later in, you know, in the in the tail and in the body, in the base body. Okay. And here, I already want to start it rotating. Uh, maybe not too much. I don't want to lose the, the direction that it's going to. You know, maybe this pose can be far further far this one too let's bring it back a little bit then here let's put it yeah I think it's it's working better yeah, it's a little bit snappy, maybe too much. Well, we can see it in a in a minute. As soon as we maybe we can bring this a little bit too far. Up. Yeah. So basically, now in the head, we can go and tweak a little bit certain things. But basically, the thing that I want to go and do first is, you know, the, the, is try to start tracking my arc of the body here. And so I just want to show you how I usually do it uh, because I think that it's an important thing to know uh, how to do it. So this is our camera. And I want to go here and uh, show motion trails. And this is a, a thing that I learned not a long time ago. It's a recent thing because I didn't know about the existence of this tool into Maya. I usually always animated the same way with the same tools, the same things, but I didn't know that actually Maya had a motion trail um, that, that for me is really powerful. But I'm just going to go there and see what I need and use what I need about it. So uh, we're going to go into animation and use this motion trail by select and selecting, first of all, this root control of the squirrel. And so if you can see here, there is all this you know line with the frames showing all the things that are happening you know and so this is really important because it shows me if I if I go there and select you know and put a frame to all of the places here you can see it can tell me the curve and arc and also the, the spacing of, of everything so that's, that's really amazing so already by doing this I can start addressing and you know I can select it into you know in, in, the, in the viewport this is a really powerful tool for me for me and so the thing that I want to do is, in this case, I want to go back to this frame and pull everything up to make, you know, a more, select this one, bring it back also. And also select this one. You know, try to 
to put a situation where there's a big gap here. You can see that for me it's really working fine. See, we can adjust a little bit here. Also here, we can maybe track also there the arcs later. And by in this place, maybe we can go and you know just start. You know, we we can see the sense of the arc, right? There's a little bit of arc there, and that that's really important. So you see, by by doing this little things, it's already changing a lot. You know, so we have this key here, then this gap here, and then this gap here that is, you know, bigger than this one. So that's the thing that help us. You know, like we said, ins and outs. You know, easy ins and easy outs. That's another principle. And so here in this case, we're gonna have a big gap, and then start sl slowing down later because usually this is a big anticipation for a big boom, right? Boom. Yeah, it's working for me. Maybe it's a little bit too fast, but no big deal. It's just a test. And once we're done. We select the motion trail and press delete on our keyboard, and so it's gone. Ooh. So basically, the first thing I want to do now is go and start also offsetting things. Yeah. This first part of the of the tail works. First base, put it down a little bit. I'm gonna delete this key. I think it's too much. I'm gonna put a just a little bit of movement, and that will work up our way up. Maybe it's too much. Yeah, I think it's too much. I like scaling down a little bit. Go on 36, click and drag here. Yeah, it's better. Okay, just a little bit more. Let's scale up a little bit. Okay, so on the base. Part I don't really want to really touch much. It's really working. Just want to put little changes. Okay, I like it. Put here like a little, little bit of. Also here. Okay, so maybe in this case, let's save the shop for a second. Maybe here I can start, you know, posing out a delay. Let me down. Whoops. Let's see a little bit what's going on here. I can determine that maybe I can select this one, this one, build my way. No, that's that's not really what I'm going for. But for now, I wanna I wanna see what's going on in this first control then from there work my way up I 
Okay, so for instance here, I can maybe adjust a little bit more in order to have a okay. Yeah. Let's delete this key. Here are more. So this one. Okay. Okay, so I think that the first piece is working properly for me. So let's go ahead and start adjusting this one. Starting to give also a little bit of delay, you know what I mean? So in this one I want to put a little bit of just a little bit of delay more. Okay, so Think that I need to do something like this. Sleep this key. Yeah, it's working better. And I don't think that I need to you know bring everything and this way like I mean I'll delay a little bit this too yeah so a bit more Yeah, I think this one can go still, you know, maybe slow it down a little bit. Is something popping? I want to try to see what's... What is it? Let's see, let's try deleting things. Oh yeah, it's better. Okay, so it's working better. I want to try a just yeah, just slowing down certain things just because. Okay. Okay, so let's start delaying a little bit and rebuilding some poses. You know, for instance, we can break this one up. You know what? This is okay. Bring this one up a little bit more. It's a little bit poppy. I can maybe delete some keys, which we are unnecessary. Okay, so in this one, okay, 
and maybe delete this key here. And now I start, you know, want to have like a pose more. Now that's coming down. Just a little more. I can reverse uh, you know, reverse C. Okay. Yeah, like preparing himself. But you know what? Maybe it's too much, so I'll avoid this reverse C I'll, so much and I'll select everything. And just keep something that I like, like this pose. This one is too much. Yeah. Yeah, just keep it more simple. Oh, I see a penetration here. Maybe I've exaggerated too much. Something. Favor. Suppose here, and also this one here. Let's just yeah, it's better. Okay. Let's just have less information as possible. I'm, I'm re-sculpting a little bit because, because of that Can penetration. You know, sometimes when you find yourself and you need to rebuild certain things. But yeah, basically, it's working. The idea is there. So now we're... Like I said before, we are going our way, our way up. Delaying a little bit things, if you can see. So, trying to keep it more alive again. Not putting too much information while the tail is, um, you know, settled. And since here there's a, a lot of movement in these keys, I'm going to select them all. Just try to. You know, try to less information as possible. Resculpt a little bit here. Okay. So this is a good spot where we can try to arc, you know, this this little guy here and try to put a nice arc into it. So with a good maybe another rig or you know I tried I tried to, to put a locator on, on the tail and it didn't work, so I'll maybe try it uh, later. Uh but yeah, basically now we can try, yeah, building, you know, making our way up to the final controls of the tail. So I can go there and start sculpting. So here, like, 
this place here. Yeah, we're going really much frame by frame now. These are moments where I usually go there and work a lot frame by frame. Can be can be frustrating sometimes, but uh, when you get it right, it's okay. So in this case, can maybe pull up more tail here, here, and start rotating it back. Okay, here we can. We can adjust it later. And here we get have a really big change shape. Trying to pose a little bit the character. Put away this key that for me is a little bit too. Okay, and bring a little bit of life to it. That a little bit is too much. Or maybe not. Just keeping it, keeping this key a little bit more. Let's try just, you know, just playing around and see what works better. Putting keys, deleting others. I will delete this key here, for instance. Okay, let's delete also this one. And here, for example, I can start experimenting a little bit try to stay on model I'm going also back and forth with other the other controls. I like the settle. And I think that I can go here and start sculpting a new pose for it just for a second. Yeah, this works much better. Just for a second, yeah. Just want to make a new pose. Oops. Always need to pay attention that things are flow, flow you know, that they work. Sometimes we need to tape, pay attention that things work. And in this case, there, are, there is still something that bothers, bothers me. I usually try to stay on twos. So here give a little bit of delay. The tail. Stuff like that. And now the big challenge is this big, big gap over here that we can try addressing. Reversing a little bit something. Yeah. 
So this is going to be most of all pose to pose. So I'm going to go really frame by frame in certain points and adjust the tail the way that I want, trying to stay on the model. It can be a little bit challenging, but it's, you know, it's part of the game. Okay, so let's put this one. Start rotating up a little bit the tail. Yeah. Oops, this one not. You know, it's always a back and forth, as you, as you can see. Let's try to. I'm trying to do something again, maybe I already did before. Yeah, it's a little bit too snappy, but for me, it's it's a point where you know I can start building. Uh, other animators usually I'm gonna open yeah a little bit of <laughs> of light the circle of, circle of light light of uh, life <laughs> great movie Lion King really great movie um, okay so here we're still addressing still trying to address as much as possible can I have you know the you see it's breaking there the tail we want to try to keep it smooth and appealing just like it needs to be okay so now here maybe we can Yeah, can play around, do some changes here and there. And I think we're almost there for this demo. Maybe we're off screen, so who cares? You can just go there frame by frame and try to fix what feels wrong. Maybe, yeah, you know what? Maybe this one can go out. Just a little bit of pointing the tail. Let's see. Maybe it's disturbing too much. Maybe the most problematic thing is this point here. Yeah, feels much better. Okay. Yeah, so basically we can go here and um, address this other point. Yeah, here, getting a little bit of delay. Let's delete these two keys. What's this too? For instance, here, build a little. So this key, keep more. Oops, let's do. Oh, 
open up a little bit more here. Let's do this one and see where it goes. Now let's open up. You know, maybe it's working better. Sometimes we really need to go frame by frame and and see how things can feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Feels much better. Of course, there are some places where I feel pops because we are not tracking. But for me, it's a good point of start. You know, it's it's already working for a lot of uh, you know for a lot of things. We can eventually try to pull. this place of the tail so that we don't feel too much of the comp penetration. It's, it's nice if there is a little bit, just a little, so that we feel that it's contacting the ground. You know? There's a big change here in the shape, but it's not really bothering me now. You know, sometimes these tails can be fun to animate like this. Maybe it's too much, but I don't know. For for a test, I think it's it's not a big deal. Okay, so um, yeah, um, I think we're done. Um, I hope you guys like this demonstration of of how I. Uh, usually, you know, create my animations. We took a little. It, it took me a long time to do it, just because you know, uh, it's my first actual tutorial of animation, and it's been fun for me to do it. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, this is usually how I approach animations. Uh, you know, using pose to pose, and this is how I usually put together all the principles of animation so we we have here you now the squash and stretch of the tail and the body right here the the lead and follow of the tail of course it can be polished more uh, but for a demo it's it's okay for now secondary actions so we have here the the ear ears there are flapping a little bit like hi <laughs> okay then the the action here anticipation and anticipation of the anticipation so we have two anticipations uh, so one that's going up and down and then boom jumps uh, if we from here jump directly uh, to this pose that it's you know if we are here and we directly boom jump you know it's not feeling uh, you know we, we lose contact with the with the character and so it's not really appealing but in this case with a with a nice anticipation of the anticipation and the anticipation which is this one and we see also the tail that it's following a little bit and compressing in this you know shape here let us understand that something is going on and it, you know it's gonna be a big jump and in fact it's gonna be really snappy and appealing so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, if you have any questions let me know hope to, he to hear from you soon um, and if you wish to see other tutorials that just let me know and uh, I'll get back to you uh, as soon as possible so thanks for watching uh, 
Uh, have a wonderful week. Uh, and like I always say, take care and happy animating. Ciao.